All right. Just a quick video, I hope. This uh, question was asked to me by Mr. James Bond himself. Thank you, 007, for asking this question. Uh, this is a great question to ask because I feel that it is um, not only a typical question um, asked by SOA or CAS on these type on the exam P, um, but it's it's sort of the right level question I think I don't think it's one of the well I think it's difficult I think it's tricky especially if you're if you're just starting to you know learn this material uh, but I don't think it's too tricky. I don't think it's too tricky for an exam, actually. I think that this is uh, a question, difficulty-wise, comparable to an exam question. So I have just um, the main two pieces to write down right off the bat. Of course, read the question five to a hundred times, as usual. Um, I have my random variable n. It's a discrete random variable, of course, since it represents the number of major snowstorms, okay? I don't know how they're qualifying a major snow, snowstorm, but regardless, uh, this is what we're saying. And uh, n is distributed by the Poisson distribution with uh, lambda parameter 1.5. So of course, that is the expected value um, of a Poisson distribution. It's also the variance, just some quick properties to note. And uh, we're, we're asked something about the insurance policy or the insurance payout. Okay, I don't remember what the exact terminology they're using. Let me look real quick. Uh, we want the expected amount paid to the company under the policy. So I'm gonna use a notation I've used in previous videos, which is um, something like this, uh, X sub P. So I'm gonna let um, XP be the um, amount paid Uh, by the policy. Okay, uh, I briefly looked at <laughs> the SOA solution after I answered the question and just basically laughed to myself. They explained nothing. So I will go through the details for you. This is my new random variable. Um, I always like to label a new random variable to help myself uh, basically just ensure that I'm answering the question correctly. Um, they want the expected, uh, basically the expected payout under this policy, right? And so I want to take E of this, the expected value of this. I've labeled a new random variable, I want the expected value of that. And now let me just figure out basically what are, what is the range, right? What is the range of this random variable? What type of values does this random variable take on, right? So let's write that out. Let's write that out. Maybe I'll do it over here. Okay. Um, XP the payout under this policy. I'm first gonna do it just step by step. This is how I recommend uh, taking these sorts of problems, especially in the beginning. Once you get very used to it, you can write down the general formula immediately. But in the beginning, uh, and it's not a bad idea, okay? Avoid little mistakes, write it out carefully. Think about what the question is saying. They're telling you um, that the payout's gonna be nothing if there's one snowstorm, if there's a major snowstorm, uh, the policy is going to cover nothing. And actually, you should be thinking, well, of course they're going to pay nothing if there are no major snowstorms. So I'm going to say right here, it's definitely going to be zero, okay, if n is equal to zero or one, right? I mean, if there are no major snowstorms, they pay nothing. And based off of the policy, they pay nothing if there's one as well. Well, what happens after that? Um, they decide uh, under this policy, they decide to pay 10,000 if they're uh, for each snowstorm exceeding one, right? So, in other words, they're gonna pay 10,000 um, if n equals two, okay? So, if there are two major snow, uh, snowstorms, they'll pay for basically one of them, pay 10,000. Uh, they'll pay, I'm gonna write it this way actually, they'll pay uh, two times. 10,000 if n is 3 and well they'll pay 3 let me write one more they'll pay 3 times 10,000 if n is 4 okay etc so put dot 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 keep going 
can I write this in general? Can I write down sometimes what's called in math a closed form formula or closed form sort of equation relationship uh, for this random variable xp? Well, hopefully you can see that we have the following. So hence, what is the uh, amount paid by the policy? It's equal to a multiple of 10,000. And if you wanted to write this a nice compact way, it's 10,000 times n minus one, where n is the number of major snowstorms. Um, what values does n take on? n is, well, when does this hold? Let me ask this, when does this actually hold for xp? It holds for n greater than or equal to one. That's when that's true. So we're in great shape. We are in great shape because now I can write down um, exactly what it is I'm looking for, right? I can write down exactly what it is I'm looking for. So I'm of course gonna run out of room, but this is what we have now. So according to the question, they want us to find the expected value of X sub P. Now this is exactly why I personally like to construct my, my own random variables. Cause now when I write this down, I say to myself, I read this, I literally read this expression and say, does this attack, does this answer exactly what they're asking me for? Read this, this says the expected value of X sub P. X sub P is the amount paid by the policy. This is the expected amount paid by the policy. This is exactly what they want me to find. So I have an expression describing the amount paid and now I can actually compute that just using foundational techniques for expected value. This is a discrete random variable. As you can see, it only takes on uh, integral values. For whatever reason, SOA likes to say integral values when they mean integers. Actually, in this case, natural numbers, multiples of 10,000. I don't know why, I don't, I don't, just say natural numbers. I don't know, whatever. Integral values is still valid, but anyways, anyways, I digress. By definition, what is this equal to? This is equal to uh, the sum from, now what values uh, does, of n does this actually valid for? This is value for, uh, valid, valid for n equals one uh, to infinity, right? I mean, theoretically, there could, we have no idea how many major snowstorms there will be, right? So it goes up to infinity, and uh, by definition of expected value, um, I take, excuse me, the sum, I sum over all the values of the random variable and I multiply that to uh, the probability, all the values of the probability distribution, right? In this case, we have a probability mass function described by Poisson. So by definition, right, it's 10,000 times n minus one. This is the piece associated with the expected value. And then I multiply this to the probability mass function. And in this case, in terms of n, since uh, that's what I'm dealing with, right? Uh, and is Poisson, so you guys are all, uh, we all know the Poisson distribution very well. You know the PMF, you don't even have to think about it. You just actually, you actually just dream about the Poisson PMF because that's how on top of your game you are, right? It's e to the negative lambda times one point, uh, times lambda, sorry, uh, to the uh, n divided by n factorial. So, so this is what we have. Let me just close that off a little bit, right? So hopefully you're seeing what I'm doing here. This is the Poisson PMF with its um, given mean, its given mean of 1.5. Uh, this is the portion, uh, the values of XP. I mean, this is just how you compute uh, expected value, right? So values of the insurance payout. This is just definition. This is just definition. And this is why I laughed. I laughed because when I looked at um, SOA, they started with this. <laughs> uh, fortunately for you, you have me to, to tell you to uh, fill in your gaps, right? Fill in the gaps that SOA leaves out. So here we go. Let's compute this. Um, they also don't explain anything about how they compute this, although I do see how they're doing it, but let me do it the way that I personally attack a problem like this. So of course I'm gonna need more room. However, I will write one more step. One more step here. Um, 
before I do that, let me just say what they did. What they did uh, was they, they basically um, <clears throat> uh, took this indice to zero. If you replace this n with zero, start at zero, then we're going to be summing up, of course, from zero to infinity. And what is this going to be inside here? This is going to be the 10,000 times the expected value of n, which we know is 1.5. And then what they need to do is they need to minus off the zeroth term. Okay, so they're going to get the expected value of n times 10,000. Then they're also going to get a probability, actually. Uh, they're going to get um, the sum of the probability uh, from zero to infinity. And that equals one by definition of a probability di uh, distribution function. And then they need to subtract off what they added in. So I don't think I explained that very well, but go back to what they did and, and see if you can fill in the gaps there. Uh, now let me do it uh, the way that I prefer to attack these problems, which is the following. So what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna take the 10,000 out completely, right? Uh, so this is equal to uh, 10,000 times the sum. And let me put brackets, because this, you gotta be really careful with this sort of thing. It's easy to make a mistake. This is gonna go through everything, okay? So this is gonna be times the sum. I'm still gonna start at uh, I'm still gonna start at one, okay. So I'm gonna start at n equals one to infinity. I'm gonna take this factor and distribute it through the parentheses here. So this is the following. This is n e to the negative one point five times one point five to the n over n factorial minus this sum n equals one to infinity. So again, I've distributed this through this little piece. I took 10,000 out, distributed this through this binomial, right? Two terms binomial, right? Uh, now I have the following. So e to the negative 1.5 times 1.5 to the n over n factorial. And now I'll close this off. So hopefully you can see that these are equivalent expressions, uh, perfectly legal uh, to do this sort of thing. However, if you are, well, I hate to say this, but a math Nazi, I don't know, maybe you can't even say Nazi in today's, today's age. Is it too politically incorrect? I don't know. If you get kind of obsessed with math details, which I mean, you should to a certain point, you have to be careful with distributing an infinite sum. When can you distribute an infinite sum such as I've done? If it converges, uh, and it does. It actually converges um, for all n, actually. It converges for all n. It converges to e to the 1.5. Anyway, I don't want to get into those details, but I can legally, mathematically legally distribute this infinite sum. Hopefully you can see that I get this. And now how am I going to clean this up? Well, I'm going to look at this. What is this piece? What is that piece? Now, again, you guys are so familiar with Poisson distribution. It's just basically easy for you at this point, right? So you look at this and say, of course, this is absolutely just the expected value of n. That's exactly right. This is this is the expected value of n. We know what that is. By definition, that's 1.5. What is this piece over here? Hmm. Well, this doesn't have the factor of n in front, so it cannot be the expected value. However, what am I doing here? I'm adding up um, the Poisson PMF from n equals one to infinity. So what is that then? That is exactly the probability uh, that n is uh, greater than or equal to one. And actually, I just realized something. I just realized something. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. What happens if I plug in one? You gotta be careful sort of thing. If I plug in one here, what happens if I plug in one? The whole thing zeroes out. This zeroes out, right? It's gone. Let me do this. I don't even care about plugging in one, right? If I plug in one, it's zero. Let me change this to n equals two. To n equals two. Okay, so I do have to modify this a bit because if I plug in one, I get zero. So really, our sum is starting at uh, n equals one. All right, all right. This is almost. This is almost the expected value of n. This isn't the expected value of n, though. What is it? If it, if it was, if it started at one, it would be the expected value of n. So it's the expected value of n minus the 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 one term <laughs> when n equals one what happens when n equals one well this is e to the negative 1.5 1 1.5 1 .5, times 1.5 what is this piece this is 
the probability that n is greater than or equal to 2, right? Now, let's do this. Let's do this now. So let me give myself some room. Hopefully, you, you are convinced as to what's happening. Let's see if I can squeeze it in. So, what do we have? Well, I wrote down what this expression is, and I have this piece as well. So, hence, we do have the following. We have that the expected payout under this policy is equal to 10,000 times... I hope you're convinced that this is the expected value of n minus the probability n is 1. That's pretty much what that is, right? So this is um, the expected value of n minus uh, e to the negative 1.5 times 1.5 minus... Now what's going on here? Do you think that I want to compute the probability n is greater than or equal to 2? Well, hell no. I definitely don't. What's the proper way to think about that? It is to consider the complement. So this is really the same thing as saying uh, 1 minus the probability that n is less than or equal to 1, right? And 10,000 needs to go through all of that business. Once I have this, I'm good to go. This is equal to 10,000. Expected value of n by definition is 1.5 minus e to the negative 1.5 times 1.5 uh, minus 1 and then uh, what's this piece? This is minus e to the negative 1.5 times 1 plus 1.5 man barely squeezing that in barely squeezing that in so what is this equal to? this is equal to let's clean it up a bit uh, hopefully you can see that when I distribute, um, this is actually going to be positive here, isn't it? This is going to be positive. <clears throat> so this piece right here uh, was here. I distribute the negative, so that's now going to be positive. All right, so it looks like I have this situation here. It's stupid arithmetic. Easy to make a mistake right here. That looks good. This, I distribute this through, it looks like it does cancel, right? These terms of the 1.5 factor times e to the negative 1.5 cancels. And uh, I guess, yeah, this is actually gone. This is gone right there, right? That's not there. That's not there. So let's see what happens if I plug this in. And this looks like 10,000 times 1.5 minus 1 plus e to the negative 1.5 and I get 7231 and that is the right answer right <laughs> Woo! yeah that's that's right that's right so 7231 with a decimal 0.3 so anyways stem arithmetic is what gets me I really prefer the more advanced math. It's arithmetic that if I make a mistake, it's usually there. So anyways, hope this makes sense. I do recommend that you go through SOA's solution. Fill in the gaps. You may prefer the method they use. I mean, this is just how I usually compute this sort of thing, but um, it's preference, right? That's math is an art. You can take any approach you want as long as it's valid, as long as you obey the properties the mathematical law, right? That's usually what I say. Whatever. All right. Anyways, tell me what you think. Hope it was helpful.